Okay, summary is something that took us 46 minutes. We're trying to figure out, well, I'm not going to do the demonstration. Go to the preceding video, video preceding number, and you get the whole thing and, and the introduction, and, you know, we, we show the system and how we kind of measured the torque and so forth, okay? But we've got this angular system, magnets and beams and pieces of wood, and we can calculate its moment of inertia, which we did. We got about 0.1 kilogram meter squared. We used it over here. And we tried to see how that all fit together. Hopefully, we would get this derivation or this result, but didn't know enough. So we went back to simple harmonic motion, basic premise F net is negative kx, where x is your position with respect to equilibrium, and the analogy for angular simple harmonic motion, which is what we're talking about, net torque is negative k theta, where theta is measured with respect to its equilibrium position. Okay? And then we get the equation for simple harmonic motion, Newton's second law is the net force, and acceleration second derivative of x with respect to time, get this, and then after a long time I managed to drag it out of you that the solution to this equation would be a cosine squared of k over mt plus phi. And we went through a fairly long discussion of the intuition you need to get here, and um, I just noticed another overhead glitch. Got my square root sign over the t and that's absolutely not correct. Okay? It's the only place I did that. I just got I'd like to claim the chalk slip, but there's no evidence of that. I was just careless. Okay? And then we talk about what this means. Okay? This is clearly a solution of this. You do the two derivatives, but you really want to understand it more deeply than that. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, the significance of this is that this is coefficient is what drives the argument of your cosine function through its cycle. And this quantity has to change by 2 pi in order to go through one cycle of the cosine. And since we're wanting to look at you know, how long it takes to cycle, um, you know, we need to understand that. Well, the only thing that's changing here is square root of k over mt. And square root of k over mt has to change by 2 pi. Algebraically, it's real easy to see that if the square root of k over mt changes by 2 pi, then t has to change by 2 pi over the square root of k over m. Because if t changes by 2 pi over square root of k over m, then when you multiply that by square root of k over m, you get 2 pi. And that's your 2 pi radians of a complete cycle. It has to be a little more intuitive than that, especially with a little mental arithmetic or whatever it does, okay? Because, well, it just needs to be. Okay, anyhow, so, if t changes by this, then this function completes one cycle. So, we call this square root of k over m. Well, if something is moving around a unit circle, or a, a reference circle, at angular velocity omega, that's how many radians per second, you got to go through two radians, you're going to divide the two radians by the omega radians per second to get how long it takes to go around there. You divide the number of radians by the number of radians per second. So that, we're going to call this quantity, square root of k over m, omega. So we have a cosine of omega t plus phi, where omega, doggone it, is the square root of k over m, and that's why it's the square root of k over m. It's the square root of k over m because this is what drives this through a cycle. And in the circular model, this omega is the angular velocity you have to have as you move around the reference circle to complete a cycle in that time. Okay? Or the time required to complete a cycle is 2 pi over omega. 2 pi over omega is 2 pi over the square root of k over m. It's the square root of k over m is what we call omega. There's a reason for it. It's 
a little bit complex, but as I said at the beginning of the course, this is fundamental and this is fundamental. Omega is squared K over M. You can't do simple harmonic motion without those two things, unless you're just memorizing formulas that you're never going to remember. Okay? It's very inefficient. You've got to memorize 10,000 formulas, you've got to know 10 concepts, which is easier, uh, which is more efficient. Well, you're probably going to need more than 10 concepts. You're probably going to need a few formulas, but don't overdo it. Okay. For angular simple harmonic motion, the derivation is identical. The equation is exactly the same as this equation, where you've replaced x by theta, f net by tau net. We talked about why. That should be obvious. If not, go back and get a 46-minute video. Okay. I alpha is negative k theta, pi being moment of inertia, alpha being angular acceleration, totally analogous to the second law for linear motion. Solution comes out like this. A little bit of a caution. Theta prime is omega. Bit square to k over m is omega. Okay? Your book uses omega for that thing. Wikipedia uses omega for that thing. I don't think it's a good idea, but I'll do it too. But you got to be careful. The solution to this equation is this. Identical in form to the solution to this equation. Just that A is now not in meters, it's in radians. Okay, because position is in radians. Theta is position. Cosine of omega t plus phi is just a number. It doesn't have units. So theta has to have the same units your amplitude does. Your amplitude is in radians. Okay? But that's not omega is the square root of k over i, and square root of k over i is not your omega equals theta prime. You've got to keep them separate. In any case, okay. Now I've located a couple of errors that were bothering me because when I counted the time for this thing to make a complete cycle, I got about 16 seconds. When I calculated it, I got about 50 seconds. <coughs> because I did something really stupid. Okay, I knew I had, I just couldn't find it. Um, so, I'm going to write this. Theta equals theta max times the cosine of omega t plus phi. At 0.7 radians, which is about where I measured the force at a 10 centimeter distance, from the axis and got about the force that would support 10 grams. Um, the net torque was negative k theta, negative 10,000 dynes, which is the force exerted by the rubber band to hold the thing back, as figured by pulling the rubber band back, noticing its shape, then going to a pan balance and pulling up on a balanced system until the rubber band was in the same shape. We determined that the force I was exerting at the 10 centimeter position perpendicular to the beam was the equivalent of the force of gravity on a 10 gram mass, which is negative 10,000 dollars. Okay, and then we multiply that to get the torque by the moment arm, which is what I didn't bother writing down when I did this. Okay, and got the 50 seconds around the 30 seconds. So it's going to work out now. The 18. Okay. Okay, so we've got this giving us k equals net torque divided by theta. Theta was this 0.7 radians that we were out from the equilibrium position. 100,000 dyne centimeters was the net torque. We divide that, we get about 140,000 dyne centimeters per radian, and that converts to 0 0.014 meter newtons per radian. A dyne being a gram centimeter per second squared, a newton being a kilogram meter per second squared, takes a thousand grams and a hundred centimeters for a dyne to make a newton, that's ten thousand, okay? And then you got a centimeter here, it takes a hundred more of those, that's a ten times a hundred thousand. And that's ten million and so forth. And we talked about that, you want to see that in more detail. Anyhow, we get 0 0.014 meter newtons per radian. And then, then follows that, we put a big red circle around it so we finally got it right, that omega square root of k over i is 0.014 meter newtons per radian. Well, we've got smudged in handling. 
and then a little more in fractions, uh, divided by the angular uh, the moment of inertia, 0.1 kilogram meter squared that we usually calculated. We get 0.36 radians per second. 0.36 radians per second means 0.36 radians, 0.36 radians, 0.36 radians. Keep doing that around the circle, you find you get something like 18 seconds to get all the way around the circle. Of course, there are formulas which you should not use until you thought it through. But we get about 18 seconds. I counted 8 seconds for a half cycle. I got 16 seconds. We have really good agreement, 10, approximately 10% discrepancy between our results using a lot of approximations and getting the moment of inertia. And also in common. Okay? So, that should illustrate the whole picture of simple harmonic motion in this context.